I trust that the Zoom people will be able to hear us to some degree. Uh, thank you everyone for coming today. I really appreciate it. At first we thought this room was gonna be so crowded uh, and it may still get that way. I suppose as people find their way here, but like I said, our vice president is looking, uh, but uh, we need to move on. I know we're running just a little late uh, so that it's even more imperative when we do our announcements to keep, keep on time. Uh, so my name is Gil, Gil Feliciano. I'm the, your new president for, for this year. Uh, our terms are only a year, so you got another 10 months or so with me, and then uh, we'll find someone else. Uh, so the person who's actually going to succeed me is Lulu Blacksmith. She's with ECC. Uh, we call that president-elect, uh, so that she, for this first year, is kind of under me, learning the ropes, uh, so she's ready to go next year. So if anybody's interested on the board, I appreciate it. We're full. <laughs> Thank God for once. Uh, but please let us know because our committees are always looking for, for help. Our committees, uh, marketing committee, we have fundraising committee, finance committee. I mean, there's, we've got several committees that could always use one or two hands, especially our social culture committee. Uh, we plan kind of the fun uh, events. So if you have kind of a knack for that, we'd love to, to have, invite you to, to be part of that. Uh, so without any further ado, I, uh, Gil, I'm actually... Uh, president of the Midwest IT Pros. It's a brand new LLC IT uh, firm that we just incorporated. My two partners are here. They'll be introducing themselves later. Uh, I'm also part-time with the Coalition for Safe and Healthy Elgin. I'm the Drug-Free Communities Coordinator. Uh, and uh, what else don't I do, right? Photography, uh, whatever. Uh, just just don't, don't, don't make me sing. That's all I got to say. <laughs> so uh, I, I, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Mark. Is Mark here? Mark is ready. No, it's not. So I, I'm going to, while he, he's, he's our host, he'll be coming in. Uh, while we wait for him, I did tell him 1215, uh, I'd like to at least introduce uh, one of our members uh, from our board, Rafael Villa Gomez, uh, who's our secretary. So he's an officer. Rafael, could you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell us if your life was a TV series, what, what, what genre would it be? And then if you have any announcements, brother. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you got me on the second question. now. <laughs> we'll pick one for you if you want. <laughs> sure. Uh, Rafael Villa Gomez. I am a realtor with Remax United. Been a realtor for over 16 years now. And I like Gil, I do a little bit of everything. You know, we like to get out in the community and uh, really get involved with the people in the community where we obviously do the business. So you can find me. I left some information back there. Um, we are bilingual, obviously, and uh, me and my brother work together as a team as well. So thank you. Uh, shoot. Uh, genre. So I'm sort of on that cusp of millennial and I'm okay. 1980s. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, full house. I don't know, whatever. That... <laughs> okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm right there in that full like house. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Linda? Okay, so then our next board member I have to introduce is Linda Ramirez. Linda's with the Social Culture Committee. And Linda, tell us a little about yourself. Tell us what genre, <laughs> if your life was a TV series, what it would be, and then any announcements you might have. Hi, everyone. I'm Linda Ramirez, and I've been in the board for a little bit over four years. But uh, probably a friend for I don't know how many years. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm an insurance agent. I'm an insurance agent. My office is downtown, uh, right down the street on Grove Avenue. And my work with a lot of uh, uh, people from here. And it's like so nice having a lot of connections, you know, the networking. So you can get insurance for me. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. Uh, our next board member I'd like to introduce is Magda Perez. Uh, Magda, I know you're eating. Uh, do not shoot any projectiles at our guests, but while you do that, uh, tell us a little about yourself, uh, what TV genre your life would be, if any, and then any particular announcements you might have. So my name is Magdalena Perez, I'm a clinical psychologist, and I am the co-owner of Luna Theater Health Center, which is located on Division, and my colleague Michelle Theater is also here to be our co-owner. Hello, everybody. Hey, Michelle. I joined EHS about a year ago. I'm the financial board member. 
I'll figure out my title, but two months ago or so, I'm still figuring out my responsibilities. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I'm really happy to be here, happy to be part of the community. Um, Michelle and I are working really hard and getting back to the community as much as we can. I know we're going to go to the Explore program tonight for the future fair. We present the feedback group. We have a, a lesson group starting that's completely pro bono uh, next Monday for Latina, continuing 13 to 18. Awesome. There's a support group for them. So we're trying very hard to get back to a community that, you know, gave a lot to Michelle and I. We're both out there. So we're very happy to be here. And this is really embarrassing, but like the show that I always used to watch was the Gilmore Girls. I know. <laughs> That's a great show. That's a great show. I don't show. understand me either. For some I'm really attracted to that show. I actually got to go to um, Warner Brothers, I think, or Universal. And I got to see the set. I scrolled no. the set. <laughs> Good thing you're in there. <laughs> Self confessed a little bit. I love it. Uh, but I do need some psychological help. To talk to All right. So uh, I'd like to break in that. We'll get to the other board members in a minute. Uh, did promise our host to, that he'll be able to start at, at 12.15. Uh, Mark Thayer is his name. He's a chief executive officer of the Elton Symphony Orchestra. Uh, he also goes by the title of Lord High Mucky Muck. If uh, any of you guys are interested, that's a title I just dubbed him with about two minutes ago. So, Mark, if you don't mind, it's up to you. Thank you, brother. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm really glad we could be here in person. I, I'm pretty new to Elgin. Got here in August and hired a bunch of new people at the symphony. I'm going to introduce them in a minute. But I have sat in on some of your meetings on Zoom, and it's not much fun. So I'm glad you could come and eat. And please go eat more because there's a lot of a lot more food. There is now ice and cups, so go get some ice if you'd like a cold drink. Please help yourself. And there's also some foil so you can take food with you, take it home, because it's way too much for us. Let me introduce our staff. Some new folks, some are not. Uh, this is Macaulay Manzano, our librarian and patron services manager. Uh, come on, come on up, guys. This is Anthony Gasca, who we just hired recently. He's working with us as a translator and helping with social media and marketing as we become a bilingual organization. Finally, this is Matthew Way, our development of direct or director of development, fundraising. Uh, Eric Gaston is vice president for artistic planning and operations. And right in front of them is our brand new marketing intern from Judson University. This is Ezekiel Navarro. We do actually have women working here. <laughs> I, don't know why. I don't know where they all are today, honestly. That's not, not the plan, but uh, most of you know Rebecca, our director of finance, who's one of the few that's worked here for many years. And Erica is our head of, head of our box office. And we're about to hire a new uh, young marketing manager. So you'll need to meet her soon. We're having a, those of us that are new are having a great time getting to know Elgin and the people here and our audiences. And we are, as I said, becoming a bilingual organization. I studied in Spain when I was young, went to seventh grade there, and I've worked in various South American countries, and I'm very excited to be part of such a diverse community. I didn't cook the food. <laughs> it's, it's from La Roca, and I live very near there, near St. Mary's. And we realized quickly that the orchestra is almost 75 years old, but it has not connected well enough with many of our communities in Belgium, especially the Latino community, where trying to change that and do more collaborative programs, more community concerts, more in partnership with many of your organizations. So I hope to meet all of you. Please introduce yourselves. And I'd love to have lunch sometime, talk or more about you and your organization. That's an invitation. And so I've got my card here and I want to meet you and learn more about what you're doing. Um, one thing we just started in January is a community advisory committee, which Carlos Chavez from Ecker Foundation or Ecker Center is chairing that for us. It's perfect because there's a very famous Mexican composer of that name from the last last century, I think. And we'll be doing some of his music. But Carlos is not a musician; he's just a regular audience member. 
And this committee is helping us to, since so many of us are new, I want this committee to help us get to know the community, advise us about how we can connect better with the community and, and um, be our ambassadors throughout the community. So I'm very excited about that. We're meeting again in March. And if you'd like to be part of that, let me know. We're not gonna meet a lot because everybody's busy, but it is going to meet every two months for the first year, then two or three times a year after that, once we know more what we're doing. Um, we passed out a small flyer like this, and there's also a big program book with all the same info, all of our concerts for the whole year. And we'd love to have you come. We just had a fun concert of Beatles music last week. Um, the program coming up is the Mozart Requiem. Some of you may have um, seen on TV the singer Ryan Speedo Green. He's a bass baritone. He's coming in April for a program called Old American Songs. And that's not a concert of songs. It's a concert of music that incorporates American songs. And it's mostly orchestral with this guest singer coming as well. In April is our mariachi program. And I know that happened once before and then it was canceled right after the shutdown. Did any of you attend that the first time? I hope everyone will come back. We want that to be a regular event. And then the Shahrazad program will be in June. So we're quickly planning next year. This year was planned by the people that used to work here. And then most of us started in August and September and are making the year work while we plan next year and figure out how we're going to present concerts. And we're also looking for a new music director. So next season, all of the conductors will be finalists and candidates for that job. And that will have to be somebody who, besides being a great conductor, they're going to have to know how and have experience connecting with the community, getting our musicians out of the concert hall, into neighborhoods, doing different types of concerts and classes and doing a lot of educational work. So that's our main goal for now. And we're excited about growing and expanding in those areas. So that's all we have going on. Any questions? Have any of you been to concerts? and had a really great or really terrible experience. <laughs> if you have a lousy experience, let me know. And if you have issues with the website or with tickets or anything else that we're presenting, let us know. That's the only way we can fix it. Patty Arroyo said in uh, Zoom that she's loved those concerts so relaxing. Great. So we got a fan there for sure. That's great. Well, <laughs> 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 I do too. They all laugh at me because I do that as well. Like, you know, I've, I've heard people say, I don't know what to do or what to wear for the symphony. They think the symphony is for old rich people. And probably the perception was accurate at one time. We're working very hard to change that perception. Um, I would add to that old rich white people. And that's not the case anymore. We have a really wide diversity of programs and guest artists and musicians in the orchestra from everywhere. You can see some of them here. And our goal is to be welcoming and inviting to everybody. We don't care what you wear. There's no, there's no fashion clock at the door. And we're also lowering prices so that families can come. My parents are both music educators. Uh, they couldn't afford expensive tickets and we're lowering prices this year and more next year to make sure that no one can say I can't afford to go to the symphony so that families can come. We're also, we have $10 student tickets to every concert and next year we're starting a new program with some of our concerts, a majority of our concerts, uh, youth under 18 will be free if they come with an adult. Oh so you could buy one ticket and bring all 20 of your grandchildren. <laughs> and I've seen it happen. Uh, and that's fine. Until we suffer from being sold out every night, we don't want people to come. We don't want barriers of money or anything else to keep you from coming. Language, clothing, you know, it's, it's an orchestra presenting concerts of great music from all over the world from the past 400 years. And people say, well, I don't know what to do. I say, well, 
just sit there and listen. And if you're not so into it, you can leave. I, I sometimes leave at intermission. You don't have to stay there. But we are trying to make it fun and interesting and diverse. And someday we won't have to wear a mask and you can have drinks and take them into the concert and it'll be fun. So that's where we're headed and that's our goal. So please come and if you have suggestions and questions, let me know. I'll put my cards back there next to those program books. Please take them, please call me, please join me for lunch and let me learn more about what you do here and how we can collaborate. Okay, great. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. And gentlemen, Anthony, how you doing? Thank you everyone for coming. Appreciate it. The guy in the middle, what was his last name again? You? Yeah. Way. I'm the way. Okay. I had to do it. I had to do it. I'm not even Mexican. It's funny, for those of you that don't know, my brother in law, Manny Barbosa, had a street, again, it's all off the side here this morning. And so they wanted to do an honorary street in his name. And so they, it's always been like, you know, the Joe Smith way, you know, the, and so they said, hey, we're thinking of having this, you know, the Manuel Barbosa way. He's like, can we change the name way? Because it just has that different connotation. It's different. It's kind of, so they actually changed the, I think it's the place, was it Rosie? I think, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they want the Manuel Barbosa way. So, uh, anyhow, thank you. Thanks to Mark and for being such a great host and, and providing the food and the place for us today. Um, the chamber did say that if you're a member of the chamber, this room's available for you. So that might be a good incentive if you're not a member of the chamber. Uh, I'd like to continue now just introducing everybody. This is going to be true for everybody in the rest of the room. Uh, we wanted to change the format a little for everybody in that uh, we wanted to kind of dispense with our committee reports because we wanted to give more time for you guys to tell us a little bit about yourself and stuff. So, but if you're interested in our reports, if you're really just dying to see how our membership's doing, marketing report, whatever financial reports, we got all that, we'll send it to you, not a problem. Uh, but for the short amount of time that we're together, I really wanted to leverage that time uh, because we all need to get back to work or back to our soap opera, whatever we do for the day. I, I like soap operas, but that's me. Uh, so the next person on the list, and I'm going alphabetically backwards, uh, is uh, Jeanette Mahalik. Is Jeanette here or is she still out in front? Okay, Jeanette's being our sergeant at arms out there. So we'll move on to Jose Macias. Jose Macias, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us about what t what genre your TV series would be if we had one of your life, and any announcements you might have. Thanks, sir. I think I've met some of you, most of you, none of you. Most of you see us at the German Hospital. Um, I've been on the EHR board, marketing chairs, uh, last May or so. It's been fantastic here in New York for hosting us. Um, yeah, so we actually the Sherman. We were in a little pause, but they'll be back. As part of our musicians' care program, uh, TV show. So we're saying like the show that we want, that we are genre. The genre. Oh, they're not. I'm going to choose the show Mad Men. Oh, so, 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 Thank you, Jose. Did I say we have 30 seconds, Jose? <laughs> Cutting it close, buddy. I got you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, our next one, David M. David, the man with the plane and the golden tan. There he is. Hola, hi everyone. My name is David M. I'm a local state farm agent. I'm also part of the social cultural chair. So I guess they put the two insurance people together because we know how to party. Out. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Um, <laughs> Real quick, I guess genre of my shows would be MacGyver, A Team, wow. Bill Cosby, show, The Cosby Show, yeah. Grease Company. Awesome, thank you, David. Appreciate it. And and also just keep it. I want everybody to know that we are joined by folks in Zoom. They'll have their opportunity as well. Uh, but <coughs> the the mic is up here, so it the last two or three rows, make sure you project. Mm. And so everybody hears you. We don't mind if you yell, that's okay. Uh, so the next board member is new to our team. We're so excited, Maria Borrero. Maria, you're on. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is 
I work for the Elgin Police Department. I actually just finished my first year this past January. I just joined joined the board December, so this is my second month doing this, and it's it's a lot of fun to be honest. Um, just being in the room with other Latinos or people that support and encourage each other and organizations to be a little bit more Latino friendly. Um, I love that we're meeting in person. So this that was one of my goals to get to be part of this experience and network with each other. I moved to Elgin 13 years ago from Puerto Rico. It was a wonderful experience. Um, I went to ECC. I, you know, I experienced a lot of the things that a normal or a person that has been grown here in, in Elgin has experienced. So I'm really proud of that. Um, I work as a community outreach specialist. So my goal is community, people, connecting people with resources. I'm really happy to be joined here by Officer Gutierrez because we're all about that. And like some people mentioned before, it is also our goal with the police department to bring some of your organizations and some of your initiatives to the community through us. Time's ticking, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we're, um, even though I'm working mostly with scholarships and the award committee, keep in mind, we can connect in other ways. Like for example, we have an autism acceptance event coming up in April. We have an Easter egg hunt. I would love for some of your organizations to be there present and you know share some resources and giveaways with our children and our families. So um, a few things that I do wanna remind people, we are accepting applications for the Elgin Study Network Scholarship for our high school seniors. Um, seniors have until March 25th to submit all the required documents. Very easy, simple process. All of our information is our, in our Elgin Hispanic Network website. I don't know if, Rafa, you, if you can put the link there on the website via <laughs> on the chat so that um, other resources that are via Zoom can um, access them. But all of the information, both in Spanish and English, is on our website. And and yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Linda. <laughs> oh, okay. I got it there. <laughs> <laughs> and then as far as TV shows, yeah, no. as far as TV shows um, I think I want to say I'm like the Mandalorian, Mindhunter. Stuff, just stuff. Game of Thrones stuff like that. Oh, wow, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I think appreciate it. All right, we have two left. Uh, but I'd like to introduce the next one, uh, our vice president, Lulu Blacksmith. Hello, or president elect, yes. I said vice president. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I want to remind you of the, the show, This Is Us. <laughs> That's a tough one. All right. And Jeanette, is she here? Oh, so this is our last board member that's currently here. We're missing a couple, but uh, Jeanette, tell us a little about yourself. What uh, genre of television, if your life was a TV series, and any announcements you might have? It would be a Hallmark movie. Okay, okay. okay. Hallmark movie, thank you. It would probably be a sitcom, but that's okay. So um, my name is Jeanette Mahalik, and uh, I've been involved with Pet Nation for over 20 years, so it's a organization. For those of you who are visiting or those of you who are new, um, you can get a lot of great contacts to this organization. And I have I have really not only made great contacts, who have helped me on a lot of projects, 
but also um, learn so much more about our community through this organization. So I, I hope you'll try it out for eighty dollars a year. It's worth trying. I promise. You. So anyway, um, that's all I have. Jill. All right, thank you, Jeanette. I appreciate it. We're going to go to Zoom and uh, ask the folks at Zoom to introduce themselves. Remember, you got thirty seconds or less, and. Uh, Rafael will go in order how he feels. Let's start. How do I unmute? S to unmute. Yeah. Please unmute. And if you can, yes, show us your video so that we can see we your lovely face. Who's first, Rafael? Uh, Grisel Leon, can you hear us? Can you unmute yourself and please go on video? There you go. Hi, go. everyone. My name is Grisel Leon, and I am. Uh, from Gilborn Public Library, I work in the Kids Space Department. Lorena, Lorena Nunez. Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yes, but we can't see you. Um, well, that's okay. okay. <laughs> 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 Pretty bad next time. <laughs> yeah. um, my name is Lorena Nunez. I'm with uh, Greater Family Health. Uh, we just recently changed, well, actually, I shouldn't even say recently. It's almost going to be a year since we changed our name from Greater Elgin Family Care Center over to Greater Family Health. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator. Um, and my favorite show or uh, movie um, or TV series, I love watching like Criminal Minds and anything that has to do with like um, zombies and weird things like that. <laughs> Walking dead. Do you, have, do you have any announcements you wanna make, Lorena? Um, yeah, with Greater Family Health, we currently have the at-home COVID-19 testing kits available for the community. So anyone that is um, needing a test can just come in and ask for a kit. Um, and each kit comes with two tests. Um, and then these are also available for any organization that would like to pick up a bulk supply. Um, we, we do just ask that you connect with our director of practice management, Stacey David, and I can leave her email in the chat. Um, or you could just email me and I can connect you to her. Um, so that way you could pick up like a hundred or so uh, for your own clients and you can help distribute that to the community. Again, it's free, free of charge. Um, we are also supposed to get masks. We haven't received those yet, but once we do receive those, we're also happy to share with the community. Um, and other than this, uh, we are actually opening a 10th location in Palatine and that's gonna be March 7th. So it's not Elgin related, but it is a huge, uh, huge announcement for us. We are opening March 7th and we're gonna be providing uh, care for the entire family out there as well. So we're very, very excited and we're, it's keeping us very busy. <laughs> so. Wish awesome. I could have joined you. you all in person next time. Awesome. Thank you. Michelle Esquivel. Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle. I am the executive director of Well Child Center, which is a nonprofit organization here in Elgin. Um, my movie genre would be a dramedy, I think. That's the combo of drama and comedy because I'm trying to laugh through all of the pain. Um, and then let's see, for Well Child Center, two things. If you have any families who might be income eligible, $49,000 a year or less with a family of four who are experiencing food insecurity, have children under five years of age and might need women, infants and children nutrition benefits, please, please, please check out our website, wellchildcenter.org and have your families and people in the community contact us. <clears throat> Citizenship and immigration status is not checked and we would love to increase our caseload, but more importantly, we would love to be able to provide nutritious and healthy foods to families in our community. Nice. Nice. And then the second thing is we have a full service dental clinic here. It's the best kept secret in Elgin, I can tell you that. We serve families who are uninsured and underinsured. We're open on Saturdays now. We're open a couple evenings a week. And families who come to us love us. It's pediatrics, one year of age through 18 years of age. If a child has special needs, they can come here through 21 years of age. For $75, you can get a full cleaning exam, fluoride treatment, and visit with the dentist and our staff 
and it is a deal and you will love the experience. So spread the word. Thank you. Sherry. 30 seconds, Hi. Sherry. Hi, I'm I'm trying to get the camera to go on. It doesn't seem to want to be going on. Can you hear me though? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. I'm Sherry Blazer. I'm the director of Elgin Public Museum in Lords Park. And um, we're very happy to finally partner with the uh, Elgin Hispanic Network. It's been a long time in coming. Ah, there it's on. Um, one thing I would like to note is that we are participating in the Week of the Young Child. I don't know how well you can see this, but that is April 7th. Uh, well, our part, and it will be April 7th, that's the Elgin Partnership for Early Learning. And um, we're going to be doing a drop-in program for a couple of hours that day. It's during a school week, so I can't really get school kids to come. I would like to have some volunteers for... Um, uh, helping out bilingual uh, for this particular program. It's, as you can see, it's called In Touch With Nature. We'll let kids touch some of the natural things around the museum, seashells, bones, stuff like that there. So if you can uh, help out with that, uh, contact me, please. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Patty, Patty, you're on. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Patty Arroyo from St. Joseph Hospital. And my TV show, there are multiple versions of it, but the original one is Italian. And then there was one on the USA Cable Network from Canada, but it's La Femme Nikita. So undercover secret agent, that would be me. And no other announcements from the hospital. Just all stay safe and keep hand hygiene and being eating healthy would be good for you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. That's it. That's it. I mean, great. Thank you so much. Did we miss anybody on Zoom? No, right? No. no I think we got it. Lorena, sure. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, everybody on Zoom. And uh, just remember, our mic is tethered, so we, we really can't pass it around too far. But what I like to do now for announcements in the room, again, about 30 seconds, you know, I'm not going to be too bad about it. But uh, let's just start going boom, boom, and boom. Left to right. You guys ready to go? Introduce yourselves. Like I owe her money or something. I owe her to my wallet. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll start. Okay, so I am Yesenia Sanchez, and I just started um, the February with the Elgin Area Chamber. So um, me, um, law and order. Oh. <laughs> Good. Just lie in order, good, good. Um, late nights, and, and just, just enjoy the night. Appreciate it, I am Terry Ganeski, I'm Vice President of the Elgin Area Chamber of Commerce. I see many of our members here, so it's wonderful to see a part of this group as well. Um, my favorite genre, genre um, would probably, why I'd like it to be a comedy, it's probably a drama. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Terry. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ryan. I'm with the Elgin Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. We handle tourism for the city of Elgin and then the neighboring communities as well, such as East and West of D, Bartlett, South Elgin, and a few others. And any sitcom or genre that I was in would be sitcoms like Modern Family. Um, and uh, one sad announcement I have to make is this is actually my last week with the Elgin Convention and Visitors Bureau. So I'm going to be leaving the Elgin area after this week for new opportunities. But the organization is not going anywhere. So a member of the organization will still be attending the Elgin Hispanic Network meetings uh, going forward. But this actually means that we are hiring for a new sales manager, which was or is my current role. So if you do know anyone with a sales background or a passion for Elgin and the surrounding communities that is looking for a new opportunity, you can visit our website at exploreelginarea.com to learn more about the role and its uh, directions for how they can submit their application as well. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Floydell. I'm with the United Way, and um, I represent King County 211, which is a number that anybody in the county can call 24-7 if they're in need of any human or social services. So this could be anything from my child needs a new bed to um, help with uh, 
uh, substance abuse or counseling services, grief counseling, anything like that. Uh, we have uh, translation services available and we are hiring right now for um, bilingual people to uh, help on the phone lines. Uh, we don't want the bilingual, the, the Spanish people to have to go through the translation service. We would like the, the Latinos to be able to speak directly to somebody who speaks Spanish. So we need more Spanish speaking people. Awesome. Thank you. Ezekiel. So I, I'm Ezekiel Navarro. Um, I'm going to be working with Mark and ESO, um, I guess, on the team. And yeah, I just uh, be sure I'd be after our last year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro. We're going to probably just snake since the mic's already here. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Eddie Santiago. Uh, I'm a financial advisor with a small company called Financial Growth Advisors. Um, we specialize in tax diversifying our clients' portfolios, help them generate extra tax-free income in their retirement, as well as um, help people who are 65 and older with their Medicare. So um, one announcement I guess I would have is March 15th is the deadline for open enrollment. So uh, if anyone you know is 65 and older wants to switch from um, any you know insurance supplement to a Medicare Advantage account, um, I'd love to sit down with them and talk. Um, one show I guess I would like to be a part of or in <laughs> Uh, I guess would be South Park. <laughs> <laughs> that says a lot. <laughs> South Park. I'm going to just look towards the camera, I guess. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> they can see uh, it. Yeah. Uh, I'm Gabriel Camacho. I'm with my West Side Peoples. Uh, the genre, I would say, is probably dramatic comedy. And um, Grew up in the Elgin area. Um, been in business for eh, about 11 years and looking forward, we're setting up shop in Elgin. Um, newly partnered with uh, Gil and Ben, and um, I'm the lead network engineer. Um, so, yeah, just don't think we have any announcements. Thank you. Leave that to Ben. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Ben Albridal um, with Midwest IT Pros. Um, as far as the genre, I would say dramedy. Uh, my guilty, uh, yeah. And I would say my guilty uh, uh, series would be Jane the Virgin. We will be hosting uh, next month's event for Midwest IT Pro. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. Hello, everyone. My name is Norma Prado. I am an insurance agent with Country Financial. Um, my office is in Central, but I recently moved to South Elgin, and I'm looking for opportunities to connect with my Hispanic community. Um, our company is uh, very focused on giving back to community, so um, we're always looking for those kind of opportunities where we can help out. Um, we have a Helping Heroes program where we donate or we can sponsor events for um, police departments. We also offer discounts for teachers and offer responders, basically. I specialize in home, auto, and life insurance. And um, I guess I would relate kind of to, even though I don't watch that show, um, <laughs> Modern Life. Uh, you know, being in a biracial marriage, family, yeah, yeah. raising kids, you know, that is that comedy drama of everyday life. Good show. But, yeah. Good show. <laughs> so, Thank you. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Amanda. I represent the owner of Premier Comfort Heating to be here today. Mm. His name is Trinidad, and um, we do commercial and residential heating and air conditioning. So if anyone needs anything, Mm -hmm. Feel free to give us a call. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, hello, everyone. So, my name is Brenda Escobedo, and I work for School SPG 46. I am the Family Welcome Center coordinator and part of the dual language program. So, I have some mm -hmm. important information. I know that there's a lot of community agencies and businesses here. If you have parents, you're in contact with parents, we're offering the dual language academy for parents that is going to be on March 19th. It's going to be through Zoom. Because, you know, with all these situations that we're still facing. So, but it's going to be from 8.30 to 1 p.m. So, there's going to be a lot of community agencies that are presenting information to our parents. So, if you have contact with parents, I have a lot of flyers here. So, like, you're more than welcome to take some of them. 
And if you need more, uh, you can just contact me, you know, Brenda Escobedo at U46.4. And I have a lot of flyers over there. You can go to our website. Also, we have another event. We have a lot of contact with families. So we are we have the open registration for kindergarten students. So it's already open, it is online. But if parents need assistance, we have a new building that is on the 1019, that is the welcome center. So all the departments that are working with families are together, uh, the family welcome center that I um, oversee. And then is uh, the learners uh, registration, district records and project access. Project access is for families that are in need. If you know families like a parent, need like a specific resources we're always there to support them so here is the flyer and also there's one more i know that i don't have a lot of yeah. <laughs> did it in half already <laughs> so this is very important because you know we deal with a lot of families and the dual language program is a very important program in our family in our district and the district is huge so we offer the dual language program for families like uh, their uh, their uh, language that is not spanish so if they want their kids to learn Spanish, we are uh, receiving, you know, the interest form and also for our uh, Spanish speakers. So it's also, we have uh, this information on meetings for parents. Ah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a hug. <laughs> so we have this information on the and so we have a lot of Luna, Magda had all, has already mentioned a lot of the projects that we're involved in and working on. Um, we do have an open house coming up soon, we don't have an exact date, so please follow our social media and then that information will be updated. As far as shows go, goes, I watch a lot of different things. <laughs> But I grew up with Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to say it. And I had a good laugh with Tiger King. Tiger. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was a fun. That was fun. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Jose Cueva. So great to see everybody again. It's been so long. Uh, I'm a finance planner with Wisdom Investments. Uh, this is my wife, Myra. It is her like second day at the company. So, oh, this man. is all very overwhelming. Oh, so, so, <laughs> really, uh, you know, <laughs> and all that. So uh, it's great to see everybody. That's it. My favorite TV show, anything CIA, spy stuff, oh, anything like that. Is gotcha. Why we got investigators in here? Oh, and by the way, if anybody has a, a, a flyer, just email it to us and we'll post it on our Facebook. Myra, did you? Oh, Myra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Veronica? <laughs> I'm Veronica Nolan. Some of you may know me. I've worn different hats in this community. Uh, like I'm on the school board, but I'm actually here for uh, Food for Greater Elgin. But I will say for my shows real quick, I can't do a genre, but I'm dating myself. Uh, MASH, for the all. Yeah. 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 Good and, show. and Parks and Rec was yeah. a more modern one, all right? And it kind of tells you a little bit about me. I'm always <laughs> wanting to, I'm dealing with that bureaucracy and figuring out how to, do, how to help people. Yeah, that's yeah, man. Really that's great. That drives me. <laughs> Um, and in all my different hats. So Food for Raider Elgin, I'm here on behalf of them. I work there now for, as their volunteer coordinator. I just started in March. But for those that don't know, uh, Food for Raider Elgin is a choice food pantry where clients, we provide dignity in clients' uh, need for food access and that we don't, uh, it doesn't matter. And we don't ask about any kind of status or income. Um, it is for those in need. You can come once a week. We do ask for information to, to just monitor how many people are coming, how often, but we do not report those names or anything to anyone. We served 84,000 guests last year. Um, the need is great, and they come every day. They'll knock on the window even when we're closed. So the need is there, and you all know, probably know people in your community that are facing that need. So I'm the volunteer coordinator, and I have been responsible for filling about 115 volunteer shifts a week. And those shifts are about two to three or four hours. We take individuals, we take groups, um, students must be above 12, and we also have community service volunteers, but it's also a great opportunity for your business. If you provide um, an opportunity for your employees to come volunteer, the studies show that they're happier employees and you have greater retention. So please consider maybe volunteering one particular shift a month. I have information over there that talks about the volunteer shifts. I also have a flyer there that you can share with others that are may need food because we're open to everything. Um, and we're a high demand for bilingual volunteers. I'm always scrambling to try to get enough bilingual volunteers that can help that intake because we get brand new families who, who really need to hear somebody who can speak with them. 
So, thank and that's you. my three of my cards are there. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. That's very good. Appreciate it. Thank you. Carol. <laughs> Hi. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carol Palma, and I am a security consultant with Imperial Surveillance. We do everything with cameras, access control, intercoms, burglar alarms, fire alarms, anything to do with security. If I don't have it, I have a partner who has it. Um, we are with the NDAA compliancy, so we have all the government uh, compliance that are coming out. We have the latest technology. We have cameras that could go up to your hair's nose, your wow. nose hairs. Wow. I mean, the, the technology that we have is incredible. So um, anything that you would need for your residential or commercial, um, I would be your bilingual consultant. And as far as genre TV shows, I don't really get to watch TV. So my daughter is very much into Fuller House right now. So I'll go with that. That's a great so, show. Thank you so yeah. much. Got a bundle with the Carol Surveillance. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Hi everyone, I'm Jamari Lopez and I'm a realtor in the area. Well, I say the area, but all of Illinois is my market. Right. But um, I got into it to help the Latino community, people that don't think they have an option or have the right information because that's kind of my niche right now. Um, I work with Perilla Real Estate Group where uh, my office is based off of Algonquin, but I'm all over the place. And for me, my genre that depicts my life would be action. It never stops. Oh, yeah, right. That's, <laughs> that's good. Exciting. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Jaime? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jaime Garcia. I'm the executive director of Centro de Información. For those of you who don't know what Centro is, uh, we are a uh, social service agency providing services to the Latino community. And this year, we are celebrating our 50th anniversary. So we've been wow, congratulations. Uh, we've been providing services uh, for many, in many different types of services from uh, informational referral and advocacy, immigration, uh, parenting classes, so we have food pantry. We're a one stop shop. And people coming to us, they come for one thing and they end up, uh, we may end up helping them with two or three different things. So, uh, because it is our 50th, we are uh, going to be doing a lot of celebrations and a lot of uh, uh, a lot of events. And starting uh, in, in the month of April, we will be having an open house in conjunction with the chamber, uh, chamber after hours on uh, April 7th, it's a Thursday from four to six. And uh, we invite you to come. We'll, we'll be sending out information uh, about this. Um, pardon me. And we're also going to be having a, our uh, uh, the last couple of years. We've not been able to do it uh, uh, in person, but in person again, our community day luncheon uh, will be on Wednesday, May the 4th at the Elton Country Club. It's a beautiful setting. It's a wonderful event. And we would uh, invite you to come. Uh, look, look over on our website at uh, centrodeinformacion.org or on our Facebook page uh, at uh, Centro and Elgin and uh, just to see what all the, uh, the activities we have and our programs that we have. And we're also, especially those of you who are saying we want to give back to the community, uh, your businesses, uh, we're looking for uh, supporters, we're looking for sponsorships. Uh, which uh, for any one of our events and especially for our gala that is going to be also in person after two years that we haven't had it in person uh, on October 1st. It will be at the Q Center. We hope to have a lot of people and uh, and a lot of sponsors. So if you have any questions, feel please feel free to let me know at the end of the meeting and I'll be very happy to talk to you about it. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sergio Rodriguez. I am Vice President of IT Marketing for KCT Credit Union. So I'll talk about that first, and I'll talk about the other roles that I do in the community. All in 30 seconds. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> KCT Credit Union is a you know, long credit union, not-for-profit financial institution that does all banking products. Uh, as long as you live and work in the six and a half county areas that surrounding us, you can be a member. One thing that I would like to talk about is we really give back to our community. Our building our communities is our tagline. And I would like to talk about last year, we have affinity programs. These are branded debit or credit cards that we actually give a portion of the income that we make back to the association. So last year, we gave about $36,000 back in, in affinity. So I would like, if any of you guys want to support District 246, District 300, ECC, we have a lot of great organizations that we support. And it doesn't cost you anything. All you get is a branded debit card or a credit card. You use it, we will give money back. Case in point, 
Now with my new role as the ECC Board of Trustees, I'm always making sure I have my ECC card. So any purchase that I make, a portion goes back to the ECC Foundation. So cool. Again, cool. doesn't cost you anything. Give us a look. We have offer all types of products, mortgages, home equities, you name it, we have it. Um, I'm also board president of Centro Información, and I'm glad Jaime talked a lot about these things. I know Peri Arroyo is also a board member. Maria is also a board member of Centro Información. And like Jaime said, this is going to be our 50th year. This is a big thing for us. I know a lot of us are tired of the past two years. We're really hoping to make a really big splash and great celebration. And we really hope that you guys join us October 1st and all the other events that we're going to have. And then I'm also recently appointed to the ECC Board of Trustees. I am an ECC alum. So that's something new that was just been added. I'm very happy to serve the community. I think ECC is a wonderful educational institution and it's a really great resource for our community. Also, in case you guys are aware, there's gonna be a speaker series today at two o'clock on the history of Latinos in Elgin and beyond. So for those that you wanna check that out, go to elgin.edu to learn more about that. And it's today at two o'clock, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Thank you, Sergio. That was very good. You know, Shakespeare said Shakespeare said that brevity is the soul of wit. Sure. Uh, I think so. I know that it's on there today, and I think if you register, you get access to a recording. But check out Elsa Edu today at two o'clock. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Laura Doya. I am a management fellow for the city of Elgin. Uh, so I work at the city manager's office. Um, my genre would definitely be comedy. And the uh, show that I will always go back to is The Mindy Project. And uh, I'm currently watching um, Mr. Kim's Convenience Store. Funny show. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Appreciate it. Rosie? My name is Rosa Maria Martinez. I've always gone by the name with uh, Rosie. Rose. Rosita Bonita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I know you. Rosita Bonita. I uh, was appointed to the city of Elgin in 2014 for a year. And then I've had uh, two elections since. My term will be up uh, April of 2023. Uh, I love Elgin. I've lived here my whole life, born, raised. I left when I was in the military. I uh, served four years. Um, but what I really like about this, like, I'm sure I knew your grandparents. Gustavo <laughs> and Hermida uh, Cortez, uh, Alonso Sara, um, Alvarado, and Rita and Paqui Camacho. Um, there's, I mean, I, this, I, I can't say enough about it. I don't know if it's because I left, went to three different um, countries, and there's no place like home. No. Yes. Good. But um, my genre, I've always loved music, and I remember getting up early to see uh, Soul Train. Uh, <laughs> ah, there you go. Yes. You sure? Okay. <laughs> so we we'll to get jiggy with it later. All right. Open door. You guys close us out. Unless we miss somebody over here. We miss, okay. Oh, these two. These two. You guys. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. Um, my name is Juan Soria. I work in the outreach division of Open Door. I am the city counselor and marketing manager. I work under my director here, Marcus Bosco. Uh, Open Door is a non for profit primary care clinic that also has services that focus on uh, sexual health, HIV uh, prevention, as well as gynecological services and everything of that nature. I'm proud to work under Mar Marcos because he's one of the kindest people I've met. Oh, oh, there. Right. <laughs> and it really does make me feel like we're making a difference every day. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, we're always looking for sponsors, always looking for places to promote, you know, our materials and help just prevent any infections we can. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Marco. Thank you, much. And um, just an announcement about Open Door. We are going to have an open house on uh, uh, March 25th. Um, from uh, 12 to 2, uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are inviting all of you uh, to, to be with us. Um, we had, um, uh, before COVID, uh, we had um, a problem at Open Door, but now we are recovering uh, when we are under the new direction of our new ED. So uh, we would like for all of you to meet our new ED in, in uh, our vision for the next, uh, or for the next uh, year. Cool. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Amber. 
Hi, I'm Amber Peters, I'm Executive Director of Elgin Partnership for Early Learning. It's the early childhood collaboration for our community and for the other 10 communities that roll up into U46 school district. We work birth to five, um, having kids ready for kindergarten. So we really work on awareness for um, community partners, families, um, access for children getting into um, early education care and impact. Um, we're working on the Week of the Young Child right now, which is in April, the beginning of April. There'll be a proclamation, so I'll get to see Rose, Rosie, Rosita at the City Council meeting. Um, also be, uh, I will also, they're also doing a proclamation in South Elgin and also Streamwood mm -hmm. um, to remind us uh, that learning starts at birth and it's really important that our youngest learners um, get that foundation so that they can build their brains and be you know, really strong um, children, grow up and have a strong workforce one day. Um, so we're working on that. There'll be different activities in different parts of the community for families to be a part of um, that week of April 4th through the 8th. Um, we're also working on Learning on the Go, which goes to seven um, summer sites, um, two in Streamwood and five in Elgin, in some of our priority neighborhoods where maybe families aren't accessing the resources that they need. So we depend on community partners like you to come and uh, people like Lorena from Greater Family Health. Usually they always have somebody there. We have different support people there to serve the families while we have bilingual teachers there reading stories, doing activities with children and having them ready. My last thing, because I know Gil's going to... Um, <laughs> <to do this. laughs> ...is that we have um, uh, kindergarten, getting ready for kindergarten calendars. They're really like calendars for the families, but mm. really activities. Um, it's daily activities to have your kids ready for kindergarten. They're in English and Spanish. English always run out of in two seconds, even though we count, we do 11,000 of them, but I always have a lot of Spanish. So if you have an organization where you can get them out to families, please let me know so I can get Spanish calendars to you. And that's it. And my, my show, don't judge me. <laughs> bachelor, bachelor. Oh, no. <laughs> How can we not judge you? Oh, my God. Okay, we got to talk. Because I'm pretty sure I might look like one of those girls. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amber. Thank you. I knew you would. I could have said something really lame. But I knew you'd like that. Well, it's very exciting. I'm Anna I work with the Alliance for Education. We are a nonprofit here in town uh, gathering resources within the community to support the school district U46 uh, program that they just don't have resources to support. So, for example, tomorrow night we are hosting an HBCU college admissions panel. Mm. So, these are the kind of things where we have the message out to school families and parents bring your kids, doesn't matter how young they are. So we do that kind of thing. Um, we work on a lot of post-secondary transitions. So getting students into the community, getting in, hopefully into future Elgin. So we work with ECC quite a bit. For example, we help Amber because not one of our initiatives is to build a teacher pipeline really in need this community of Hispanic or bilingual teachers. So working with, for example, this summer, uh, students who are in our education programs, get them internships at child care or educational places in this community. So they'll go to ECC, possibly NIU, come back as a teacher here. Those kinds of initiatives, community resources, helping you 46. Thank you. You're not going to believe this. Grew up without a television, never had a television, still don't watch TV, and don't not, don't know how to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. This gentleman is not here to keep order here. He's actually here as a guest. Yeah. <laughs> a little about yourself. Please. I'm Steve Gutierrez. I uh, represent the Elgin Police Department. And uh, show, I was very show, I would say, in memory of my dad, Michael Knight. Oh, yeah. Knight Rider. Uh, so, a couple of things, though, I do, I do want to bring up is the rise of vehicle thefts has mm -hmm. gone up in the area. And this is because mm -hmm. people are going to the car to turn it on. Oh, I'm going to go back to the house, get a coffee, or get lunch, mm -hmm. and then five minutes later, boom, the car's gone. So it's a crime of opportunity. So mm -hmm. if you are going to do that, uh, if you, make sure you have a, a spare key, lock it up, and then put the spare key in your pocket, right? And then go in, do your thing, come back out. Uh, also, for if you have family that's they're elderly, uh, there's people out there, they're tricking them, you know, thinking they're with a Comet or mm -hmm. Comcast or whatever, and they, they ask mm -hmm. to get 
then in the house, and then once they're in the house, there's somebody else ransacking the place. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yep. So wow. be careful of that. Just let them know that's going on, and that's it. Wow. Well, thanks for uh, ending in a positive <laughs> note. <laughs> Everybody, thank you for your patience. We appreciate you here. Next week, next month will be Midwest IT Pros. Thank you. Thank you.